Hello friends, this is Dr. Rajal Shah. Thank you for joining my YouTube channel today. Today I try to bring a, one other uh, important uh, high yield topic. So when we evaluate prostate needle biopsies, we face with three critical issues. Recognizing cancer and avoiding underdiagnosis, particularly when it is limited in amount. Recognizing various benign mimics of cancer and avoiding overdiagnosis. And then the third critical issue is to recognize features of a lesion which are borderline to classify either as cancer or as a benign. So that is the situation we refer to as an atypical glands or ASAP. And that certainly can be a pretty problematic area in prostate biopsy interpretation. So today I try to bring that topic to you. Let's review a couple of cases to kind of uh, make a case for this particular uh, topic. So this is the first case of a 55 year old male with elevated PSA and I have only one slide to show. You can see here that I think there are two atypical glands. They are made up of small round rigid architecture and there is a clearly cytological atypia. You can also see a little bit stromal retraction in these glands, some crystalloids. So there are clearly some atypical features in the lesion, but then the question is, is this sufficient to classify it as a cancer? Second case is a 70 year old male with PSA of six nanogram per ml uh, with normal digital rectal examination. And I saw this crowded focus of small uh, glands at the edge of the biopsy. When I look at this at a little closer examination, there is definitely some degree of cytological atypia. And I think glands appear somewhat haphazard in this high power magnification. So I did P4 stain. And as you can see here, uh, the nature of this lesion is very clear that I think it is at the edge of the biopsy. So you are not able to see the full face of the lesion. But within some of these glands, you do see rare patchy basal cells and then MCAR or P504S is clearly overexpressed in these glands. So this is another scenario where I think is this sufficient to classify it as a cancer? Is this sufficient to classify it as a benign based on some basal cell staining? And that brings up my of atypical glands suspicious for prostate cancer. And this has been a, often a problematic area for pathologists and as well as I think patient, I think because they may have to uh, have a more follow up. So uh, keep in mind that this particular entity, what we call AT or ASAP is not a biological entity. It is the term we use to connote our uncertainty of diagnosis due to either insufficient architectural, cytological, or sometimes quantitative features, or sometimes it could be also due to confusing immunohistochemistry. And variety of terms have been utilized to describe this type of uh, lesions called atypia, atypical hyperplasia, borderline lesion, uncertain biological behavior, atypical small acinar proliferation, and ATP and ASAP are perhaps the most widely utilized uh, uh, in uh, clinical uh, uh, practice because the, the urologists are also quite familiar with uh, these two particular terms. I particularly like to use the term ATP because it is more broader and encompassing of also larger glands which can also show atypical presentation. So again, as we look at the, those cases and try to summarize that the result, uh, the case may result into atypical based on variety of the things. Either it has prostate cancer with histological features which are insufficient to establish a definitive cancer diagnosis, either due to small size or less number of glands, bland cancer features such as pseudohyperplastic, pain like prostate cancer, uh, biopsy artifacts. It may be benign lesions with atypical features such as crowded glands with minimal or mild cytological atypia, adenosis versus prostate cancer. It may have atrophic features with some atypia. It could be atypical glands adjacent to high-grade pain, which we refer to as a pain atyp or outpouching 
or tangential sectioning, which uh, could be also a problematic situation. And I will show you some examples of them. And finally, keep in mind that when you have a lot of inflammation, glands are often going to look cytologically atypia. So I think you could be dealing with a reactive type of atypia versus an inflamed prostate cancer. So these are the different scenarios from morphological point of view that may result in atypical diagnosis. And then another situation is that uh, you just plainly end up getting a confusing immunohistochemistry. So that is why I always tell that do not do immunohistochemistry if you are sure from morphological grounds. Particularly notorious in this setting is partial atrophy, adenosis. If you can confidently diagnose them morphologically, just go ahead and call that way. If you do immunohistochemistry, it is quite possible that you may end up calling them atypical because of confusing immunohistochemistry. So let us review our case one, which shows these two acytologically atypical glands. So these glands are clearly atypical, but quantitatively not enough to call cancer. So this is the result of atyp due to limited number of glands. And most urologic pathologies typically require three or more glands to make a definitive cancer diagnosis. Again, there is no magic number. It also depends on the overall uh, architectural and cytological or overall major features which are present within a lesion. But in general, you would like to have three number, at least three glands to make a comfortable cancer diagnosis if lesion otherwise shows good amount of major features of cancer. Here is another example where uh, you see the glands at the edge of the biopsy and these glands are clearly showing lack of basal cells with resumes or AMSCR overexpression. So is this a situation where we still cannot make a definitive diagnosis because you are not seeing the full face of the lesion. It is at the edge of the biopsy. You don't know uh, what is the remaining part of the lesion might be. I think we might be just seeing a part of adenosis and not seeing the full face of it. Here is another example where these glands are clearly very atrophic in nature. You also see amorphous secretions, some crystalloid type of material. Cytologically, these glands do look atypical. They are also seen at the edge of the biopsy. So here is a situation where we may end up calling it atypical due to limited number of atypical histological features and particularly with certain histological features such as atrophic appearance, you want to have more uh, atypical features, more number of glands to make a more definitive diagnosis. So that brings us to our case number two. At case number two, when we look at the high power, there is a clearly evidence of some cytological atypia. Uh, but overall, this lesion is seen at the edge of the biopsy and then overall you do still see that these glands are relatively circumscribed. It lacks infiltrative appearance, which is even further uh, confirmed in the PIN4 immunohistochemical stain. You don't see any clear cut infiltrative architecture, except that maybe these two glands appear to be a little bit kind of out of the rim of this organized process. But most importantly, these glands show patchy basal cell stains. And that is a particular feature which we know that could be associated with adenosis. So I, I know the fact that this lesion could be adenosis, but I still don't feel comfortable making a, that benign adenosis diagnosis because I don't have the full face of the lesion. You might be dealing with a cancer which is still not completely showing its face. So this type of lesion I would again refer to as an atypical because I cannot rule out adenosis completely uh, from the diagnosis. Here is a nice example which on first appearance looks like partially atrophic glands. These glands are clearly pale. They have more laterally placed cytoplasm. They appear somewhat disorganized but overall lack of infiltrative architecture. Their cytoplasm is essentially same way pale like benign prostate gland, adjacent gland. Here is a more closer look. And again, I keep on emphasizing always in my presentations to resident that I think try to compare with the adjacent benign gland. So if you look at that way, 
this particular lesion appears more like a partial atrophy. But then I stained this particular lesion. I completely had lack of basal cell staining with some AMSCR expression. So this is the type of situation where after doing immunohistochemistry, you start feeling uncomfortable that maybe it could be potentially an atypical process. And I don't feel right away calling this partial atrophy. So here is a one scenario where uh, you may end up again calling atypical because you cannot as, as entirely exclude uh, partial atrophy from your diagnosis. Here in this particular situation, you are dealing with large undulated glands with very amphophilic cytoplasm. Again, note when we compare with adjacent benign glands, these glands appear very dark. They are cytologically also clearly atypical with nuclear enlargement and some prominent nucleoli. So these glands on morphological ground looks worrisome. And when I did the basal cell stain, spin 4 stain, there were rare basal cell stain within this large gland. So again, very careful in this situation. I hear the problem is that you are dealing with a relatively very small size of the focus. So you cannot exclude high grain spin from your differential diagnosis. And this type of lesion, again, I would refer to as a tip because I cannot exclude high-grade pin completely from the differential diagnosis. In this particular case, you have high-grade pin, which is characterized by this large undulated gland, but adjacent to them, you have this small atypical gland. So this is the type of scenario that we often face in biopsies, and you wonder whether this could be small invasive cancer, but same time, you cannot exclude tangential sectioning or outpouching of the adjacent high-grade pin gland. And a lesion like this, I would refer to as a high-grade pin with adjacent atypical glands, also known as pin atyp. This is, as I told you, it's a problematic area. And there, there are not really very reliable morphological or immunohistochemical features in general. Uh, to call cancer, I like to have a large number of atypical glands. I like to have them away from the high-grade pin. I like to have them seen some dissimilarity between the high-grade pin and small glands. And you perhaps want to have a discordant immunohistochemical staining pattern. So if all of these criteria are met, then perhaps I would call high-grade pin with small focus. So let us review one case like that. So in this case, you can see that there is a clearly high-grade pin, and then you have a, this cluster of relatively large number of small atypical glands. They appear somewhat away. There is a one gland which appears close. So if I had only one gland, I cannot call cancer, but then these particular glands appear to be somewhat dissimilar, and you would, of course, stain it. Uh, but I think this is the type of situation where I may call high-grade pin with adjacent small focus of cancer if there is a clean lack of basal cell staining in these glands. So there are, we discussed that there are a variety of histological features when present would argue against the cancer diagnosis and would likely result in atypical diagnosis. One scenario is when you have small and large glands intermingle without cytoplasmic and cytological difference. That is a situation of adenosis. So when you suspect adenosis, but same time you have some atypical features, you cannot make cancer diagnosis and would refer to as an atypical. We saw example of large glands with undulated branching and high-grade pin-like appearance. We also discuss about nuclear atypia in background of inflammation. When you have random nuclear atypia, particularly think about seminal vesicle or radiation type of therapy changes. We saw an example of pale clear atrophic cytoplasm in that case I showed you, which kind of look like partial atrophy. And when you have some of these other features, a few atypical glands in proximity to large high-grade pin plants. So these are the morphological features when present would argue against the cancer diagnosis and depending on how much atypical features you have, you either call it benign or you would consider it as an atypical if there are still some features which not, don't make you comfortable. So one thing to keep in mind that compared to high-grade pain, 
the risk of finding a cancer in a repeat biopsy remains still significantly high for the diagnosis of atypical gland suspicious for cancer. So regardless of the evolution of biopsy practice from sexton to now extended and targeted prostate biopsies, this particular risk still remains high for finding a cancer if you have an atypical diagnosis. So still based on this diagnosis, patient would require a follow-up and potentially repeat biopsy. The incidence of this diagnosis in biopsy is about mean value is about 5 and median 4.4 with a wide range reported in literature. Uh, overall trend is towards lower incidence in recent studies. And keep in mind that this is an excellent quality parameter you can utilize in your laboratory, particularly if you have a high throughput lab where you are seeing a lot of prostate needle biopsies. And the mean rate is about 5% or 4%. If it is excessively high, then perhaps you are overcalling a lot of things that you should call benign as atypical. And if your rate, you say that it is 0% or 1%, then beware that you could potentially be uh, overcalling some of the benign mimics of prostate cancer as a cancer. So I think uh, you want to be somewhere between 3 to 5%. You don't want to be less than 3%, I would say, and same time not higher than 5%. That's what would be a recommended approach. The studies have shown that this diagnosis has no correlation between PSA measurements, DRE, transrectal ultrasound, and subsequent prostate cancer detection. But there are studies which have shown that if you stratify the diagnosis based on your morphological suspicion level, then there is a difference in cancer risk in subsequent biopsies. For example, AT favor cancer diagnosis has almost risk of 60% versus AT favor benign has a risk of 20 to 33%. The only thing I would advise that I think, you know, I'm not sure whether all urologists are comfortable with these numbers and know this very well. So for most of the urologists, when you make atypical diagnosis, they consider it as a significant and would perhaps uh, offer the patient follow-up biopsy. 90% uh, of prostate cancer are detected in the first repeat biopsy. That's an important point to remember. So how do urologists handle this, uh, particular, uh, this particular diagnosis? So majority of them in contemporary practice either consider biomarkers that improve the specificity of screening using either a liquid biopsy platforms or sometimes are more likely multi-parametric MRI. So if MRI does not show any lesion, some urologists may just follow up the patient. But if there is a lesion in MRI, of course, patient would require a more immediate biopsy. Some also would consider repeated biopsy with relative increased sampling of the atypical site. Uh, this is an interesting study we had done. And uh, I think the point that I try to bring, bring is that if you have a large uh, hospital uh, program or large practice where a lot of pathologists are involved in signing prostate biopsies, you can institute a quality program using this program what we call disease focus review, where you intensely review the literature, intensely review the different unknown cases and come up with a, a more unified approach towards handling this type of situation. And we have shown that if you use that approach, you can minimize the unwarranted diagnostic variability and equivocal reporting, helping the lab to improve the quality and minimize this type of equivocal reporting. Finally, uh, it is important to recognize ATIP for further workup. Uh, and again, you can do additional study uh, using deeper sections, immunostains, et cetera, to further resolve the atypical diagnosis. Uh, you can also seek an expert consultation and uh, in uh, keep in mind that many times this may prompt a biopsy. So this is a significant diagnosis. And with that note, I thank you for your attention. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share with your colleagues and spread the word about this channel. 
uh, I have now almost uh, 22, 23 videos covering different topics and I will continue to add more videos. I hope you would make benefit from that. Thank you very much.